Well, hey folks, welcome back to the shop. I know it's been a minute, maybe a couple weeks, maybe a month. We've had a lot going on with family vacations. I've had a lot of projects in here, just little simple things to get on and off the lifts and the racks on and off. So I'm glad you stopped back by today because we got a big project today, a 2000 Sportster. And we are replacing the entire, the entire, the, all of the ignition system is what I'm trying to tell you. If you would just listen, we're replacing it all. We've got a kit, a nice upgrade. I'm going to bring your peepers in and walk around, show you where this failed, show you what we're upgrading to. We're also going to be replacing rocker box gaskets as well. Man, are we going to have fun today? Welcome back to Butler Customs Motorcycle Shop. So as you can see, I've already taken some stuff off the bike to diagnose, remove the tank. Now they replaced the tank or um, I guess the owner before them replaced the tank. To an older style tank that you see propped up over there with the center console there and the speedometer in there. So gone is the speedometer intact of the stock bike look up here. With the addition of that, you have the all these kind of mess of wires that run up to that uh, center console. And I don't know if they just weren't installed well or they were just hanging kind of there. Gobs of wires. We'll have to maybe address that, clean it up. Took the battery off seat off, of course. Let me get you over here. Took the exhaust off, um, air cleaner as well, and the cam cover and plate. So this thing has failed as far as the ignition. It would idle fine, but when you rev the bike, it would pop and backfire. So if you ever have an issue like that, where the bike only pops and backfires when it's at higher RPMs, it's one of two things. It's either a leak on your air side. So it could be, go ahead and pull this off. It could be a leak in this gasket right here where your carb sets into, or it could be a leak back here where the intake goes into the head on either side. If that's not the issue, then it is a timing issue or an ignition issue. On this specific bike, it turned out to be an ignition issue. So the customer said, well, let's upgrade the ignition. And that was a great idea. Let me show you the parts that we got going in on this. What we decided to do was upgrade to an Ultima single fire. And we got the kit. So it come with the coil, it come with the new bell, it come with the wires, it came with this great ignition right here which has the switches that you can change for all your different curves that you want you can do a vos if you want to keep it or delete it um, it's a really great system and it just comes with all these wires here we'll learn what those go to and then all your connectors zip ties and little things like that also we're going to be replacing uh, the air breather it had this big 90 pound breather on it. And I want to tell you, I, I, I hate these things. You know, they stick out so freaking far on the bike. Um, I mean, you could put this on your car is how big this thing is. And so it was a female rider. So they had to extend out the pegs just to get it, her leg to pass that. And I'm like, you know, these, these things, I just don't like them. So one of the issues I found, the VOS stockwise has a tube that runs out and runs right down into here, into the back of your carburetor. So when the carburetor is sucking in more air, this VOS is very important on a stock bike because it actually advances the timing of the bike. So if you have this unplugged on a stock ignition system, your bike will not run correctly at higher RPMs. 
Now, I wish that I could have just plugged this up and I'm not even sure what's going on here. This was how it was laying. Um, they took it off because that air breather I showed you that I don't like was ran into here and that's how the butterflies on that runs. More air comes in here, it sucks on this hose and it pulls these butterflies open letting even more air in. Well, that's just kind of redundant because it's getting air in anyway. And in doing that, they eliminated the advance on the bike. Uh, so that was just not good. Also, another thing I did notice is that the ignition wires that run into the coil are been on and off so much and looked at and tried to be fixed is they're bare and there's only like three or four wires remaining on this ignition wire. It's very important wire. Um, and so that would be another cause as well. In addition to the VOS being unhooked and I don't know VOS, what's that stand? Maybe vacuum operating system. Yeah, that sounds good. In addition to the VOS being unhooked, which would not give advance, and this wire being just about to say goodbye, and they pressure washed the bike, and then they noticed after they pressure washed it that it wouldn't run right. I don't like how Harley did this. You got your cam, you know, your plate screws here, and then you got your uh, screws on the top and then this plate, you know, sets on there and those screws hold it on. But then Harley decided to take another plate and let's rivet it into this plate. And then that's how it rides. So there's no outer screws to come off and I guess the plate fall off. However, if you got to get in here and work on this, You've got to drill out those rivets. Well, when the bike came in, one rivet was in, the other was like this. And so, this is exposed. There was no gasket in here between the ignition unit sensor and this plate. So I would imagine when they sprayed water in there, everything inside here got wet. It's bubbled up, it's swollen up, and that's a good indicator that the ignition is just not right. Because I don't like that air breather so much, we got a new air breather that's simple, small, no vacuums run to it. And also on that other air breather, it was leaking oil from the heads where they breathe and uh, it just wasn't, the bracket and all, it wasn't installed correctly. So I said, let's, let's just do it right and got a new breather. And also we're gonna do the, uh, rocker boxes and gaskets as well, you and I together. So we've got a lot going on to get started. And let's start by taking the old system out and then we will start putting the new system in. Now, most guys will go to the easy part and start up at the coal and kind of work backwards, but I like to start down here with the ignition unit. So we'll take these cam cover screws off. I've already got them loosened because I've been in here kind of inspecting. Now the instructions say to mark when you pull this out to mark kind of where the ignition sets, where the sensor sets on it. I don't ever do because these lines, these wires right here are so short, you really don't have much play in how this unit's gonna set in here. You'll have a little bit more on the Ultima one, but not much more. Let me get the Ultima one up here and show you kind of what it looks like. So these wires will be fed through this hole here so as you can see, you could have a little bit more room to move around. And this has two pickups where the stock has one. 
So the Ultima is definitely a nice upgrade. So now that we've got this off and got this loose, you can see the bell there, which our kit came with a new one and a new washer and nut. So we'll be replacing that as well. But to get this out of here, you will need to follow this down to this harness here. And you can tell that you've got it by the way that it moves. You'll follow this harness with your hands. It's gonna be greasy and slimy up under there, but you will get to a place to where you can feel a connector. When you feel that connector under there, just disconnect it. Snip this zip tie here. I'll disconnect it. I'm trying to feed it up out of the hole here. There we go. And then this whole connector comes out. Now, a lot of people will not take the time when they go to pull this harness out. They'll not take the time to take this connector apart. They'll just cut it. I don't like doing that. The reason is, if there is one day some genius that can rebuild these sensors and go in there and, you know, do their magic soldering thing, then these will be valuable because these are stock and now these are, what, 22 years old now and they're original. So I always just try to preserve them even though they're bad. I know that doesn't make sense, but it just takes a little bit more time to take these connectors off. Yeah, you could just snip them and I guess solder them back one day if you wanted to. But I'll just take the time to take them off. And then I will cut this harness and get it out of the way once this connector's off. And then this whole unit, I can slide out easy. I mean, there's enough grease on there that it should, you know, feed up pretty well. Oh, yeah. Without much trouble. Yeah. So now I've got this room to get this out and I've got enough room here to go ahead and work on my connector and get all these wires and pins disconnected and then snap back in when I get it out. So before we put the new ignition in, we're gonna go ahead and get this old cup out. And you might be asking, well, why did you take the exhaust off? It doesn't look like you're gonna to need to really even use that. Well, I did that because they had a exhaust leak at the donut gasket, so we're replacing those. Otherwise, if you're just changing out the ignition, then no need to pull the exhaust out. But for us, it will make it a little bit easier in routing our wires with the exhaust out. But remember, if you do take the exhaust off and you route your wires, make sure that when you put your exhaust back on, especially the rear, that it's not in the way of touching those wires. So the new kit will come with a new a bolt, which looks exactly like the other one. I think it's a little longer. Nope, same length. And a new washer as well. So we'll just set that to the side. We'll go ahead and pull our cup off. And if you'll notice on the cup, there is a little indent there and an indent in the cam. So when you put the new cup on, you will want to make sure that that indent lines up and seats in perfectly to the cam. Yep, very good. Okay, so we'll just let that set there. We will take our new bolt and washer and then I will put a little blue Loctite on there and then I will torque it down. Now, don't go grill on these because I've seen these snap off in the cam and that is a problem. Do you know that ranch dressing isn't actually made at a ranch? All right, so now that our new cup is in, it's a good thing just to take a little air in there and blow out everything. I probably should have done that 
before I put the cup on the cam. But regardless, now we are ready for a new ignition. Now we are going to a single fire ignition. And you say, well, why is that any better than the stock, which is a dual fire? Well, in the stock, with it being a dual fire, that means that both cylinders fire even if it's not on compression. So it's better to have, I think, in my opinion, a single fire coil because, let me just run these here out the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. These just run out the bottom real nice and easy. Because on the single fire coil, I was afraid. So if your harness hangs up, you might need to tape it here or your loom. Tape it down with electrical tape, but this one pulled through fine. Now, as I was saying, a single fire is much better in my opinion because if you have a coil go out on a dual fire, then neither cylinders will fire. On a single fire, if you have a coil go out in the pack here of a dual of a single fire there's two coils actually inside here so if one goes out you still have the other one and that might could get you home so always good to have that now we're just gonna run this through you want to untwist your wire you don't want any twist in your wire so take note of how this is going to end up so this is going to end up like this because our timing screws are here and then the hole is here for our wiring harness. So set it like that, running your feet on through. Leave yourself a little bit of slack and then go ahead and set the bottom of your plate in there as you pull. And leave yourself a little bit of room on the harness so you can kind of move it around a little bit so don't worry about where it's setting at the moment because i want to show you you know where to get it where it needs to be static timing it um, so these did come with new screws and what i'm going to do is i'm going to run these in all the way and tighten them and then i'm going to back them out just enough where i can still move this around uh, just slightly. All right, so that gives me just enough wiggle room, but it still stays on the cup for us. And now we know that it's nice and seated. So before I start fiddling with this, we're going to figure out what we're going to do with all of our wire loom. Now, thankfully, Ultima gives us quite a bit of loom to run. And I think that it's going to be just enough to reach up to where it, the old coil is setting stockwise up underneath the tank at the neck of the bike. All right, so when you're routing your wires, you might need to play around with it on your bike a little bit. But there are some common errors that people will make that I want to show you to avoid when you're routing your wires. So I want to show you how we did it on this bike. Okay, so your wires run down through here. They came out the stock position. We brought them around the stock way. We went over this frame and went across and over the other side of the frame. That's very important. If you run your wires underneath, then what's gonna happen is anytime you put this on a jack stand or lift, or if you, if you hit a curb or some debris in the road, that's gonna rip that wiring harness or pinch it or smash it, and you're gonna have some issues. This is the stock one uh, that was left hanging from where we disconnected it. I'll cut these zip ties, tuck this up and zip tie it back up out of the way. Let's get to the other side of the bike and I'll show you the best route I found to go up to the front of the tank. Okay, so on the primary side, we've got our wire that you probably really can't even see. It comes across the top of the frame comes behind the inner primary case in here, up, tucked in away from the swing arm, comes up here, 
runs under the battery tray and comes up to the back of the battery tray. I've got it zip tied here and it's good in a way from the rear exhaust where it's gonna come out. Loops up, then I zip tie into the main harness and this runs up through the main harness. Here's our stock coil that we'll replace. And as you can see, we have plenty of wire, which the wire is going to run in right here. So we've got plenty of wire to play with. And I found that's really the best way uh, to route it if your coil is up here. Some have side mounted coils, so it's a lot easier to route. Still, I would go on top of the bottom frame, come out this side to do that. And I just find that's a lot better. I've even seen guys put their coils in under the seat. I, I don't know, I, don't th I think it's weird. I probably wouldn't recommend it. And I see a lot of coils mounted where the horn used to be. Again, if it's mounted there, I would route it the same way I've got it here. So as you'll notice, it's off the rocker boxes once this gets zip tied up. It's away from the exhaust and it's clear of anything underneath the frame as well. Now I did want to show you from this side, which is the cam side, this wire running up, there's a bolt right there that holds your battery tray in and I run it to the back of that and it seems to tuck in really nice and neat up there. You could run another zip tie around the positive cable coming down there to keep it but I've found that even if it comes loose, it will not come all the way over here to touch your exhaust. I can't stress enough how important it is to run your wires correctly and your harnesses correctly and out of the way of any kind of danger. I've seen guys spend a lot of money on nice upgrades, LED lights, sound systems, ignition systems, and all to be destroyed, shorted out, tore all to pieces because the wires just wouldn't run correctly. So take your time. Okay, just slow down a little bit and do it the wise way. Try a different kind of routing system. I've seen some looms come out of here and even run behind the push rod tubes and up the center of the uh, jugs. I find that to be running a little hot though. I don't, I don't like my ignition wires to be so close to heat. And some run them out here and down through here and up. So really anywhere you're cool, is located on the bike, Ultima gives you enough slack to really put that anywhere. Now, maybe if your coil was on the front fender, probably wouldn't work. So where we're at so far is we've installed our new uh, ignition timing, uh, our new cup on the cam. We've kept it loose where we can kind of fine tune it, get it uh, statically tuned in. Now we've run our wires to where they're nice and happy and out of the way. We have, uh, you know, quite a bit now of uh, room to work and a little bit of slack, and, and that's kind of how I like it. So our next step is to go ahead and take this old stock coil off and put the new one on, and then talk a little bit about going from the dual fire to the single fire and what these wires here mean. All right, so we'll go ahead and take the bolts out for this coil here and get our new coil setting up here looking on nice and pretty. Yes, it'll be under the tank. You won't even be able to see it, but it'll be new and it'll be nice. I want to show you also the differences between a dual coil and a single coil uh, so that it kind of kind of makes sense to you. Now, a lot of people like the dual fires. Uh, and like to run them, uh, especially on some of the older school bikes. But I just found that for me, the single coils work really good. Now you'll have this backing plate that's uh, threaded for your bolts. And now that this is loose, we can disconnect our leads and we do not need those anymore. We'll also disconnect our plug wires. We don't need those anymore because we've got new plug wires. So now let's talk a little bit about coils. As you'll see, this is the stock uh, and it has front cylinder, rear cylinder, and it has just a negative and a positive. And then what this will do is feed into your ignition 
and it will fire. So when this coil fires, it fires both at the same time. So while one is on compression and one is on exhaust, the exhaust will still fire, same as the one on the compression and vice versa. So the whole time you're sparking and don't really need to spark it. Like I said before, if something was to ever go wrong with this coil and it go out, both cylinders are down. So a dual or a single fire, in my opinion, is a lot more efficient, effective, and uh, with this Ultima, it comes with different advanced curves. So if you've got bigger cams and you've done some work on your heads, then you can definitely take that rev limiter up a little bit and get some higher curves out of your this is my i suspect a stock bike by the compression on it this is a single fire you'll see three leads now instead of just the two so you have your front lead you have your rear lead and you have your positive so when we wire this up you'll have your wires that run from the ignition that we just installed You'll see some wires here that on this bike we don't need. Uh, the first one is the purple wire. That runs to your VOS system if you've got it, or VOES, I don't know, VOS is what I call it. On this, since it was disconnected already, we're just going to delete the VOS system on this, and we are not going to run this purple wire. So what I like to do you can snip it a little shorter than this. You can feed it back into this harness because we don't need it. Then you can get a large heat shrink before you hook any of these up, put over this whole thing and heat shrink it down and this wire's nice and protected, okay? So we're not gonna do that. Also, we have, I think, a green wire. This green wire is our tachometer wire. So if you had a tack, you would run this to the tachometer. This bike uh, had that deleted, just has a speedo, so we don't need this as well. So we would take the green and the purple that we don't need, run back in the loom. We'll go ahead and just stick them in there temporarily before we shave them down, just so we know we're not gonna be crimping those with eyelids. Okay, your blue, here on this type of system runs your front cylinder. Your pink will run your rear cylinder. And let me check, make sure I don't tell you wrong. Ultima comes with a really good wiring diagram that shows you. So the violet is the, the purple is the VOS, the VOES, the green is the tachometer. And usually from your tachometer, it's a pink wire. So don't get them confused because there's a pink wire here and those don't go together. So it's a green from here and a pink on the tack that they go together. And then uh, your white wire is indeed your positive. So the positive, I'll show you where that goes. Your blue is the front cylinder and your pink is the rear cylinder. So I told you right. Um, now where did your coal go? Okay, here it is. So the middle, um, you're not going to see this probably on the screen, but there is a hot right here. So that's going to feed power with this white wire into the, not the coil, but into your system. So where do we get power that runs to the coil and feeds this system that we just installed on the cam? Well, that's going to be from your ignition hot. Now this bike has an older style tank and it has the old switch ignition with the little screws that go in there. And so what we're going to do is find out when the, that is on where the ignition is and just run a wire off of this ignition. It's going to set about right here. We're going to run it out of our tank and just run right down onto the top of that coil. So the way this works is you got your hot coming from your key switch, runs down, sets on this middle positive, and then you have your positive here that feeds power once the key switched on to your computer on your cam. Now how does the bike know when to fire on the cylinders? Well that's what these negative leads are for. So on your front cylinder which would be blue on here we would run it there and on your rear cylinder which would be pink here we'll run it there. 
So this charges the coil. What releases the, the explosion, the spark, the, the finger getter, is when these ground out. And so your computer does that by the cup on the cam and tells this and sends a ground signal up to this, grounds out that releases the, all the power that the coil's built up. Does it, gosh, thousands of times on the bike um, in a minute probably, very, very fast. But that's how this operates. So inside here, there are two independent coils. And so if one goes bad, you could still get home on one cylinder, though it's not recommended, but you could. So let's go ahead and get this installed. I've gabbed enough. And then we will go ahead and get our wires ran. After we get our wires ran, we'll go ahead then and we will set the front cylinder on um, our combustion stroke and top dead center. So I'll show you how to do that. Again, like I said, guys, this, this is fun stuff. So don't let electronics, you know, scare you or wiring scare you. Uh, we'll walk you through it and uh, it can be quite satisfying, actually, especially when you fired up. I love getting old bikes in that haven't run in years. And then that first startup. Man, it just makes you want to shout. It's just so much fun. So, uh, we'll get these tightened down. Now, we won't put our tank or anything back on there yet. Because we need the room. And I'll bring you in on this other side. And we'll start putting wires together. Now, the wires you pulled off, as I mentioned. Get all these out of the way. Uh, good night. We're not going to use these anymore. We come with new plugs and this plug wire is three miles long. I don't even know where it comes out at. We're not going to need it either. I'll pull it off. Throw that down. Did this even come off? Look at all this mess. So what I want to do first is get these ran. Then we'll look at our plug wires because we got to take our plugs out to rotate the bike to get it on top dead center anyway. But I want to go ahead and get these wired up so that I know that part's done. So once you install your new coil, if you're going to do your rocker boxes, just go ahead and uninstall it. Because, you know, that'd be the wisest thing to do. Now we can spin that around and run that back up. And now we have access to our rocker box top. We'll pop the carb off, give us a little bit of wiggle room over on this side. Okay, so we're back up here to wire now. I do have the coil in place and I did loosen these and angle it up and it sets much better now, nice and flush with the rocker box top. Now I can get the coil wires in there nice and good, or plug wires, I should say. So again, let's trim back the ones we're not gonna use, run them inside this harness supplied by Ultima, and then we're gonna go ahead and get a heat shrink over it that I'll, of course, clean these up and protect these as well. We will get our diagram schematics just to be sure that we have the right wires that we need. 
they were the purple and the green. Purple goes to the VOES and the green goes to the TAC, which we are not going to use. So all I'm going to do is just snip these off a little bit shorter. Save those excess wires because they're new wires. Run it back into the loom best we can. There. And then we'll take us a pretty good size heat shrink. Start that on there. These are the three wires we are going to use. And then we can kind of stuff these up inside. This is why I wanted a larger heat shrink to cover over that. So we'll go ahead and shrink that down and then we've got a nice protection for the two wires we're not using. It looks great. It's got three wires coming out that we can now run down in here towards our coil. Alright, and as you can see we got plenty of wire there. Now what Ultima provides in their kit is an eyelet, but it doesn't have the plastic covering over it. It's just exposed metal. And I mean, I suppose, you know, it's really not going anywhere. No chance for it to touch anything. So I, I suppose those are fine. But I just prefer something to be covered in case a wire touches it. But I guess if a wire gets that close to it, it's going to touch the the nut or the bolt sticking out so either one you want to use I guess is fine so we'll just go ahead and look at our diagram again and we will hook the front up first according to our diagram the front cylinder is the blue on a single fire single coal ignition and get that crimped on All right, so that's crimped on well. Now once the harness is relaxed and under the tank, it'll be coming down from the top, so I'm gonna put it through the top there. Now since this is a single fire coil and system, you don't have to worry about what side of the negative you put for your front or rear. Meaning this, if I wanted to make this my front, I can. If I want to make this my front, I can. I just put the wire on there because your power is fed through the middle wire, the positive wire. Okay. So I'm there nice and good. Now let's continue on. And I'm not going to do the middle wire, the hot wire yet, because that's something I want to show you. But I am going to do the pink wire, which is the rear cylinder. Tug on that real good, and that is done. We'll get the nut and the lock washer off. Now for your white wire, this is your positive. This goes in the middle, but remember we need something to feed positive to the coil and to the ignition. So we're going to get that from our big ignition switch. Now since I don't have the tank on here, I don't know what switch that is first. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and run the wire together. I got white wire to match white wire. Then this white wire runs into a red wire from the tank. And so this is going to go to our ignition or to our coil positive. It's going to come up and around the tank and go to our key switch. When you turn the key on, power comes on to everything and I want power to go to the coil and to the ignition. So what I'm going to do is let that hang. I've got my white wire running from the key and my white wire here that feeds power to the ignition. I want to strip this back. I'm actually going to strip it back a little bit extra and my other one as well while I'm doing it. Now the reason for that is I'm going to put these two together. 
and I'm going to put them on a single eyelet. And to do that, what Ultima gives you, they're only for single wires. So I've got a bigger one here that I'm going to slide on there and use this. That way, I don't have two eyelets on that middle plug or that middle bolt. I've only got the one. And I don't know if that helps any or not, but, you know, it helps me. I know that those go together. I know that that's the hot. And later on, if I'm diagnosing anything, you know, I, I know that those two go together. Does, does it really matter? No, it doesn't. So don't make fun. But to me, I just like that, doing it like that. Okay. So our ignition is now wired. What we have, front coil, blue wire. Positive, one wire runs to the tank with the key switch. One wire feeds positive in here. The one wire then runs down to our ignition. The pink wire runs to our rear cylinder. So this is going to be our front, this is going to be our rear when we hook things back up. So now at this time, we need to go ahead and get the tank on, get the carburetor set on, get our ignition switch on because I need power to go to that ignition so we can set the time. Also get the battery back in. So before I put this tank on, I want to go ahead and do two things. Number one, I'm going to do the rear rocker box, you and I are. Number two, we are going to do this VOES delete. Since it wasn't hooked up anyway and wasn't running right, I don't know if it even works. So what we're going to do is just delete the system. You're going to be surprised at how simple it is to just get rid of because now that we got the ultimate ignition, we can set it to run without that VOES. Okay, so when you get your plug wires out and you open up your box, you're going to find this. Just one wire with two ends that go to the plugs. So it's made to cut to your length that you need. You're supplied with these little uh, crimps and these boots that go on over the plug wires. And so what I do is I always measure the front to the amount I need, cut, and then I make sure that my back uh, is long enough. Now I'll keep an extra set of these around, but these are eight millimeter Ultima high energy suppression cables, really good cables. What was on the bike before was these uh, seven millimeter long life power pack by e-tron. And I think these are actually for cars, which, you know, spark plugs, wires a spark plug wire, but the eight millimeter uh, are really good wires that come in the kit, so let's go ahead and take the time to use these. So if you get these, the way that spark plug wires are put together is you have a single wire in the middle that carries all your current insulation and then rubber insulation around that. So that metal wire is what we need to expose. When you do that, you will actually crimp on the insulation itself. The metal wire will be sticking out. But before you crimp it, you bend that metal wire over to the side and then crimp it so that, I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but that metal wire is indeed crimped underneath here. So wire strippers, usually, unless you got a big jumbo set of wire strippers don't go up to this size you can try the cutters but I've found that I oftentimes cut right through it so the length that I need to cut I want to clear these tabs right here so I don't want my wire to be setting up inside these tabs I want it about right there. So that's about the amount that I need to cut off to take the wire and bend it over to bring it up. 
because you don't want your wire sticking way out here. Uh, that would be very dangerous. So just about right there is what I want. I take the pocket knife and I will cut in slowly working around because I find that if you got a good sharp pocket knife, that gives you a whole lot better control than wire cutters do because I can feel with my fingers how far my blade is actually going in. And just like that, that metal wire tip comes off. Now I can take this and bend it over. Then I can slide this big crimp over top. Okay, now <laughs> run your boot over first. All right. Give it a little lubrication there. Run it out here where you can see the end now. We're going to bend the end over. And we're going to slide that metal end on the back side. We're going to stop just shy of these here, and then we are going to, right. then we'll pull our boot back out over, just a little bit where it's setting in, and those are done. So there's our rear and there's our front. Like I said, I've already fitted those for length. And let's go back over and snap them on the coil. And then we can start putting our tank and our battery and all that together and set the timing. So there's how our plug wires fit. The front one runs down there, nice and tight. The other one runs around the side here, comes out the top, loops around and in there. So when you're looking at them, if you were to run colored ones, they would look kind of uh, symmetrical, it's asymmetrical. I don't know what that word is, but they look good. Now, before we slide our tank back on, we're of course gonna install the carb back on, just slide that rubber boot on, slide the carb on. Go ahead and put the intake filter on, the new one, with the new breather and bolts. But before that, we're gonna delete this VOES system. It wasn't we're hooked up anyway, so I'm gonna show you how easy this is to delete. Just take this harness off right here, it's a two-pin harness, all right? And of course, undo your holes if it's connected to your carburetor. If you're going to leave the carburetor open like we are, you're going to cap that, okay? So you'll want to run either a short hose off your carburetor and then run a screw in there to cap it or just buy a little rubber cap that'll fit down snug over your carburetor. Is this hole right here in the back. So you'll want to cap that or like I said, run a short hose and put a screw in that. So we'll put this boot on the intake, put that on. The only thing left holding this VOS, VOES system on is a bolt. Nut right here and a bolt on the other side. That bolt and nut is the only thing holding this on. It's not holding anything else on. So you can take it out and just leave it out, which is right here. Uh, or if you don't like the hole, put the bolt back in, put the nut on the other side. So now with that bolt removed, this just simply comes out. That is all there is to it. When the vacuum sucks on this hose, it's got a diaphragm in there that connects these two wires and sends a signal through here for your advanced. Because we went with the Ultima, we don't need this anymore and we can set our own advanced curve. That'll run a whole lot better. Because if this ever fails, if this diaphragm gets old and just, you know, hardened, as they will. You gotta think, this is a 22 year old bike. So anything that can make your bike not run right just due to oldness, and there's an upgrade for it, let's upgrade. Okay, now before we set the tank, of course we did our front rocker boxes, we did our rear, we did our new coil, all of our wiring up there, the wiring for the coil is in. 
The wiring for the tank to the hot for the key is there. And before we set the tank on, we've got our old stock coil connectors. So we need to delete these because leaving them just like this, I don't know, if you zip tie them together, I think that might be fine. But remember, this one has exposed wires. So I don't want to take a chance on anything going wrong. So what I'm going to do is just snip these off. Just like that, these boots will pull, covers will pull right off. And then what I'm gonna do is put heat shrink on these separate. I wanna get the heat shrink on there as tight as I can, leave those long. And then when we shrink them down to the wire, this that's excess will fold up. And that's exactly what I want. And actually just go ahead and do the whole wire. See how that folds up there? Just go ahead and shrink all that. Now what I can do is come back with a little bit bigger size one and put both of these in. Now we'll shrink that up. And now we don't have to worry about anything touching that or this touching anything. Not certain if it's even live wire at this point because we did unhook the stock ignition up to it that feeds it. But I believe on these models, there is another hot that runs into that that feeds to the coil. So I'm not taking any chances on that. Now we can go ahead and set our tank back on, get all of these wires back up to the tank and situated. And then uh, put our battery on then we'll be ready to set the timing and fire this bad boy up. On this stock bike, I've got my battery already hooked up. I've got a negative lead from my multimeter on the negative side of the battery. Now I'm just gonna switch it on DC and I'm gonna find where my hot is without the key even being on. Okay, it's not there. It's not there. There it is. So the red wire is the hot all the time. Now what I'm looking for is a hot when the ignition is on. There's the key on. It's not there. And it is there. Now if I turn the headlights on, I should still have hot there. So this is the wire that I want to run my hot to the cool and to the ignition from. Now, before we get the bike on top dead center on the front cylinder, we need to set our switches on our ignition. Now, it comes with the wiring diagram, which has all of your different settings and explains it. But if you ever lose your paper, it's also got them written on the ignition itself, which is quite nice. So we have deleted the VOES system so we're gonna turn switch one to the off position. So if we set switch two and three to off, then that's our curve one. If you want it a little bit slower, then you can set two to on and three, leave it off. Now switches four and five is your rev limiter. So we're gonna switch both four and five off. And that's a rev limit of 5,500 RPMs. If we had, you know, a bigger motor or a cammed out motor, we could set those to on in different settings. And then switch number six, your last one, is dual fire for off and single fire for on. So we do have a single fire. So we're gonna leave that on. So in this setting for this stock Sportster, we have setting one off, setting two on, setting three off, setting four off, setting five off, and seven, setting six on. So now that we've got our switches set how we want, 
Now we can go ahead and get our, our top dead center on compression stroke on the front cylinder. Okay, so to set front compression, top dead center, what you'll do is jack the rear of the bike up, take both plugs out, put it in the highest gear, and then I'll put a thumb or a finger over the cylinder hole, plug hole, while I'm rotating the wheel in a counterclockwise position or as it was going forward. You'll feel the pressure pulling up. That's when you know you're on a compression. I like to use just an old straw to stick down in there and I can watch as that straw raises or lowers. Don't use anything metal. I know some people use wire and all that, but plastic straw works good, sets down in there and you can watch it rise. You'll wanna turn till it rises up, starts to fall, and then I go back just a little bit. Then we'll go on the other side and pull the inspection plug out and see where we're lined up as far as our timing marks on our flywheel. The inspection plug here is a 3 8 So we'll just break that free, pull that off. And then as you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, or how it lines up, and I don't really have you quite square to the case. But we're just a little bit past our time and mark there, so we did a pretty good job. So I'm just gonna reach over and grab the wheel and back it up just a hair. Now, those two dots there, that's your advance. We wanna go a little past that. So while well, bobbling it, that looks pretty good to me. I can get you in the center of that there. Okay, so now we are top dead center on compression on the front cylinder. So what we'll do now is we will turn our key on. We have our VOES light off which is how we have it set. And now we want to turn our ignition until the light comes on. Now we want to go clockwise until the light just turns off. So we'll play with it a little bit. Try to get it as good as you can right there. When you're happy with where you want it, hold your finger there and then tighten down your screws. And that is officially static timed. Now we can put our plug back in. <laughs> Do not forget to put the plug back in. So we'll put our plug back in and now we can go ahead and start the bike up. Now I will leave the cam cover plate off and I do that because we might need to do just a little bit more adjusting. But now we're good to go ahead and start the bike up, let it warm up, see how it responds. Uh, since it did have trouble uh, backfiring at high RPMs, we wanna make sure that it doesn't do that anymore. Of course, don't forget to go ahead and put the bike back in neutral and put the plugs back in and the plug wires. So I'm happy with that response time once it got warmed up. Uh, everything seems to be operating correctly. 
Let's take this thing down the road and see how she does. All right, so to put the plate on, I'll put the backing plate on and then this cam cover, I, or this plate, I just turned sideways this cover and ran the screws in with blue Loctite. And the reason for that is if the customer wants to get in there quick and just switch some of the curves, they can without having to uh, drill out a rivet, both rivets, and then take this plate off and then unscrew this. So this way it's easy access. Yeah, it's turned sideways, but there's different covers you can get with the Harley logo or the Harley Eagle and all different kinds. So I find that this is pretty quick to get in there on the side of the road if you need to make some adjustments to your curves. does this bike run so much better thanks so much for watching and hanging out with me in the shop today and tell your mom and them i said hi